Well, welcome to Do It For Media's Just For The Record. I am your host, Kamal Haynes, and today I will be interviewing the incumbent territorial at large candidate, Honorable Neville Sheep Smith. The Smith, who was the Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly, will be contesting this upcoming general election under the Virgin Islands Party. But on today's episode, we will be asking Honorable Smith some of the tough questions that need answers. Well, stay tuned right after this break. There are many ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on popular. Rashford made it, Manchester United have come from behind to lead. At home or on the go, watch CCT Live. Download our app and carry your favorite TV shows, news, or live sports anywhere you go. Visit cctbvi.com forward slash live, select your package, and tune in. We now return with more Just For The Record. Welcome back viewers. As mentioned prior to the break, joining me on Just For The Record is Honorable Neville Sheepsmith, who will be contesting the upcoming general election under the Virgin Islands party as an at-large candidate. Welcome Honorable Smith. I thank, thank you for joining us here on Just For The Record. Hey, thank you. Come on. Okay, let's dive straight into the questions. Firstly, as I'd like to start with each candidate, walk me through your academic training and professional career. Well, Kamal, I went to Eastern School, primary school. From there, I went to high school, Beaver High School. And then at one point, I went to Laurenburg Institute for a basketball scholarship, which was not really successful, and I ended up coming back home. And I worked for government at the Register of High Court for I think it's three to four years. And then from there I went to Harry Whistle of Eagles and worked there for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that's how I finished my career, my school career. Okay. Um, and, and how does your purpose in life uh, and being a politician align? My purpose in life and being a politician, that's a tricky question for me because I never saw myself as a politician, but I saw myself always as, as somebody who helped in the community, somebody who just believed in people and helping people. And Becoming a politician, I thought I could have done more. But after reaching there, learning that some of the systems that we have is not as easy as I thought it would have been. But I think in life, I would like to continue being a politician because I think there's a lot more I can do for the people. But we just need to change some of the systems that we have. Okay. And, and, and in terms of those persons who may want to know the answer to this particular question, what have you done for the people of the territory during your last four years in office? That question is a question I, I always said to myself, why do people ask, what have you done? Mm -hmm. Because you, here again, you're separating the common individuals. As a government, you work as a team, and you're supposed to do things as a team. And I think that's one of the biggest problems we have, when you keep it asking a politician, what have you done? Mm -hmm. I feel like I've never done enough. I could never done enough for the people of the Virgin Islands. But I've done a lot, because whatever accomplishment that government made, I have, I'm part of that. And also whatever failures they have, I'm also part of that. So mm -hmm. that's my accomplishment. Okay. And in terms of, you did say uh, initially your plan wasn't to become a politician, but you know you were called for the role, you were, you were part of the role. Upon entering the role, you realize it's not as easy as it looks. If re-elected, how could you uh, navigate through that particular system to ensure now, because you know the systems, you know what needs to be done to get some of the stuff that you initially wanted to do done? Well, Kamal, that's one of the reasons why when I was elected, I said I do not want a ministry because I wanted to learn the system which I think I've, I've done. Um, so the first thing that I will see happen is we, we have to do some sort of forensic audit on all of the systems that we have in government and see what's working and what is not working. And then when we do that, I can start planning a road ahead of what we really need to do. Because too much times we're making decisions not off, of, not off of actually stats or data. And I think that's one of the problems we have with our system. We make a lot of decisions, but we're not fully aware of what the problem really is. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and in terms of my next question, why should the people re-elect you as an at-large representative? Because I am for the people. I do everything I could for the people. It's not about me. Um, I, I look at life where I try to help everyone. And as a large candidate person, you 
you have a tendency you have to go around and find out <coughs> what are all the issues you have. And one of the things that I do, I go around and I, I, I listen to what people say and I bring back the information from the ground and carry it to the ministers. And I think that's, that's a good way for a large to, to do things. Because I'm not in a ministry, but if I could go out there and hear what is on the ground, what people are saying, and then I could come back to the, the government and say, hey, look, these are the issues we're having. Let's see how we could fix it. I think I'm the type of person who will go around. Anybody could approach me, speak to me. I'm very approachable. I answer my phone every single time it rings. Um, and really and truly, I have a lot to offer for this country. I'm not just somebody who wants to sit down and say, hey, look, this is, not, um, this is not right, this is not correct. But what it says, this is something that we need to listen to. We need to form more community com commit committee committees in the community that we can get answers from the people, not just make decisions off of just blindly. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, what are your, uh, or more so, why do you believe that your representation is what the people of the Virgin Islands need right now? Because I think people need people, people's person, a person who's people-centric, um, who doesn't want to listen to people, not just business-wise, uh, not just um, you listen to me, then you, you hear me, then you turn off. People want people who, who they could touch and who you feel. People who care about people. Because see, see in the BVI, if we are not connected together and caring each other, we're going to still lose the whole essence of where we're supposed to go. And I'm the type of person who is, if I go up a ladder, I want to bring somebody up a ladder with me. And my intention, as if elected, is to continue serving people. I'm easy to talk to. Um, you come, you bring your opinions to me, I'll listen to you. Like my mother always say, a good person is who listens, not who talks a lot. When you come, you speak to me, I'm going to listen to you. I ain't going to be talking over you. I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. And my next question, what are your professional plans if you are not re-elected? Well, I'll go back into doing my businesses that I, I have, and I will still continue to contribute to the people of the Virgin Islands. Because one of my biggest dreams is to create a think tank for the young people. And if not elected, I'll focus on that a lot more, so I can involve the young people more in that. Um, I also try to see how much more things I can do with the community. But I will still remain a part of helping anything in government because I feel once she was elected, you should still have the right, or not the right, but the privilege and even the honor to continue serving the country. So anything that I could help in terms of the House Assembly will continue helping. Okay. Um, tell me about a challenge you faced, a mistake you've made, or a time you have failed, and how you dealt with it. <laughs> um, challenges and fail. I think that's a question that's kind of tricky for me because um, I won't say I've had failures in my life, but what I've always done is use my failures as a motivator to, to encourage or to fix it, not just sit down and harp on it. If I do something wrong, I'll try to correct it because there's a saying, if you make a mistake once, it's a mistake. If you do it twice, it's not a mistake. If you do it three times, that means you're willful. So I'm the type of person, if something happens to me and I feel like it was a failure, I will try to correct it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just sit and harp on it. I always try to correct things that um, I made a mistake of doing. So I, I look at it that way, whereas I'll, I'll continue working to strive to the best. Okay. Um, and now more than ever, politicians are being criticized as only seeking leadership for personal and often financial benefits. What is your view on this statement? Well, I can't speak for nobody else. I can speak for me. Personally, when I came into politics, it's basically I came knowing that I don't need to depend on government salary for anything. I mean, I was already okay with salary-wise with my businesses and where I was working. Um, I came here because <coughs> I felt I need to give back something to my country. I was working here for 30 years and I think I've contributed enough to a private entity, whereas now I think I could contribute to the government, to the people of the Virgin Islands. So when it comes to the salary, it, it didn't matter to me. It's just that I wanted to contribute back to the people of the Virgin Islands. And I think that all politicians should have that same view. Don't come looking at salary because the salary is not sub substantial. But you want to be able to contribute to the people of the Virgin Islands to make them better and to make the, um, the whole Virgin Islands a better place. Mm. I know on that particular subject matter, as you said, you, you entered the role not thinking about or uh, worrying about salary. Uh, we know over the political <coughs> season, this whole subject matter of the Greedy Bill have been the talk, talking points for a number of political parties, mm. with, with PBIM stating that they will uh, uh, fully repeal the bill. The NDP stating that they will partially re repeal the bill 
and Premier uh, Dr. Natalia Wheatley stating that he also will repeal the bill. What is your stance as it pertains to the quote-unquote greedy bill? I too agree that it should be repealed. Um, the bill was, it was a mistake. We, I think we, we, we had good intentions, but what happened is that we, we came, we, we went the wrong way about doing it. And I feel it needs to be repealed. Um, certain parts of the bill was to help some of the older politicians who are retired. But within that, some stuff happened and it get escalated. And I have no problem repealing the bill. I said it even during the House of Assembly. I actually walked out of one of the meetings where we had that bill being read because there was some controversial stuff going on and I told them I'm not fit. I'd rather just the bill be, um, we at first Thomas don't need to get anything because we don't have nothing to gain or lose. But yeah, there's a controversy we had. So I said, look, I'm, I'm gone. I left the house. But when I came back in the morning is when we passed the bill. But I too believe that it needs to be repealed. Okay. Um, I know you mentioned previously that initially upon coming into the political role, you didn't want a ministry. My next question is, is there any specific area of focus that you will be seeking to manage and resolve if re-elected? We'll be right back with more Just for the Record after this short break. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What are you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble, me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my city life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into, well, you know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. We now return with more just for the record. Um, I know you mentioned previously that initially upon coming into the political role, you didn't want a ministry. My next question is, is there any specific area of focus that you will be seeking to manage and resolve if re-elected? Yes, um, I'm very much believe that we need to do have reform and capacity building. Um, I also believe that we need to work on our social development to the communities. And I'm very much interested in the green, the, the blue and the green economy, and also youth empowerment. And also, I would like to see us deal with sports and recreation. Mm -hmm. And that leads to my next question. I know you are a big uh, supporter of sports in the House of Assembly. Um, in, during your term in office, mm -hmm. there were the talk for the National Sports Council. A bill, a legislation was. Created, I think it was initially brought to the house, but we haven't heard any of, of any further developments. Um, would you continue to push to have this National Sports Council finally established in the BVI should you be re-elected? Yes, but we also have to make sure we get the sports policy passed as well. It's very important that we pass the sports policy along the sports council because the policy will have to govern all of that. But why are we on sports to come out? I want to mention something on that as well. I hear a lot of people talking about sports and saying what they're going to do for sports. But a lot of things that they're missing out is a lot of the athletes that we have with, their problem is just mostly the health as well, the medical condition. And I think you will know what I'm talking about because when we went to a tournament the other day, you see how important it was to have somebody there to take care of the athletes when they're playing. But a lot of people don't see the after effect, the before and the after effect of athletes, the conditioning, therapy, and those sort of stuff. And what I want to propose, and I said it before in one of my speeches, we must get insurance, proper insurance for athletes, so that they can take these, get these, um, this medical stuff taken care of. Because that's one of the biggest bills that they have. Mm -hmm. So in the sports policy, that's where part of that should be in place in the sports policy. Even if it means attaching that to NHI or some other insurance, that the athletes can benefit from it. 
Okay. And in terms of um, that same subject of sports, do you believe there should be a standalone Ministry of Sports or Junior Minister for Sports to give the attention and resources needed to further develop sports in the territory? Well, I've been saying that for a long time. I actually campaigned on that the last election as well. That it should be standalone because it's a very big um, subject to deal with and it will get it needs a lot of attention, especially it needs to be properly fit in the budget to get things done when it comes to sports. Mm. So I, I, do, I do support that. And how do you think we should go about this in terms of having a standalone Ministry of Sport? As you said, in 2019, you would have been campaigning uh, as it pertains to such. Yes. Fast forward to 2023, there's still no standalone Ministry of Sports. How right. could this be achieved, achieved finally if re-elected? Well, the, the, the Premier will have to decide whether he wants to put it as a junior ministry or not. But I think it should be, um, what is a junior ministry? It should be done. It's very important that it will be done because if you do it, you can also increase in terms of tourism, sports tourism as well in it as well. So I think it can be achieved. It's just for the premier to get under his ministry because he have two he could take two at large. No, he could take two. Um, what you call it again? Two of the junior ministries. Mm -hmm. and he could take those, and because only under the premier office that could come. That okay. could under. So if he do that, then you could create a junior ministry for uh, sports. Mm -hmm. and, and do you believe it's needed more now than ever? It's definitely needed. It's definitely needed. It's, sports need a lot of attention. And the only way it's supposed to get attention is by itself. It's not going to get attention in any other ministry along with something else. It mm -hmm. takes a lot to, to push sports into the, into the way that we want to see it go. If we want to see it go to a higher level, it should be standalone. Okay. Uh, my next question, just changing gears a little bit. What is your view on the recently concluded Commission of Inquiry? Well, the commission at Inquiry was needed. Let's, we, we, cannot, we cannot hide and go behind and say it was, need, it was needed. But how it was done, I have an issue with. My feeling is I feel the commission increase should have been do audit on all of the government systems. Not to say do not audit on politicians, but do it on the system. Because, like I keep saying, the system is our problem. Because every politician that comes into government with the same system, you'll have the same results. So that audit should have been done on the systems that what we have. And not just on the government side, I'm talking on the deputy government side as well. Because one of our biggest problems is, is the work going through the civil servants and how it's being done. How, 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 can it, how can you get the end of something? It's taking too long to get things done. And there has to be a reason why. So if we do an audit on all of the systems and we find out what's wrong and we find out what we could fix them, I think that would have been a better thing to do. Not come and do an audit on just figures financially, saying that we are corrupt. It should have, it should have been where all across the board. Let's see what's going wrong in the BVA. Let's see what's wrong with the system. How can we fix it? I feel that what should have happened. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, as it relates to the recommendations and the final report, um, uh, what do you say then, therefore, based off your, your response, that you are not for, are in agreement with all of the, the recommendations that, that were, were given and the overall conclusion from the report? I'm not in agreement with our conclusion because definitely I'm not in agreement with the, the suspension of the Constitution. But yes, there are stuff that in the reform that we need to fix. So I do agree with the reform. We need to sit down and get things fixed. And I think what should have happened though is that we should have come to the public, which we didn't have the time, but we should have come to the public and discuss with the public before we even agree to the reforms. But we were not left with that decision to make. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and my next question. We do know um, that oftentimes the sister islands feel unrepresented. How do you plan on making the respective sister islands feel represented? Um, first of all, I feel each one of those sister islands should, have, should be a district, should have a representative of its own. It's difficult for anybody to represent the sister islands and still represent their current place, like I said, the ninth district. And I really feel if they get their own representation, it will be better for them. But for now, I see no reason why all the amenities that the BVI have that this island should not have. And we have to find a way to get that done, even if we mean doing things online. So we have to come up with a solution and how we could get this fixed. Because it's, it's not right. It's, it's, it's every year you hear the same thing that they need this, they need that, and we shouldn't be there till now. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, switching gears again. Uh, what are your views on same-sex marriage? <laughs> I know this one's coming. <laughs> um, for same-sex marriage, that's a person's choice. I'm not going to sit here and tell you or uh, make a decision for anyone when it comes to that. Uh, what I see need to happen is that um, 
we should have um, a referendum let, let the people say what and what they think and how they feel about it but for me it's not my choice it's not my call to say it should or it shouldn't be everybody have a choice to, to do what they feel is best for them okay um are you in favor of raising the minimum wage yeah, of course mm -hmm. yes i am very much so and in terms of if we elected how would you go about as rates so like convincing government uh, to, to put the necessary resources in place to ensure that this is achieved? Well, I think we already started that process because I think the, the, the governor, the, the government and the government have already made um, some sort of salary revision going through the whole from last year, I think, this year, I think. So um, I'll just continue supporting that um, because it definitely is needed because cost of living is high. Um, so I definitely support it. And how I support it is these things, as I say, is a team effort. It's not just an individual. So once it comes to carcass or once it comes to around the table, I will definitely vote for them, push for it. Okay. Um, I want to turn to um, some of the matters within your district as well. Living in the seventh district, but you're already territory at large uh, representative. Therefore, you cover the entire territory. You know, sewage is a big problem in the yeah, territory. I live in the eighth. Oh, the eighth, sorry. <laughs> but east end right. uh, area, mm -hmm. eastern end of the, ter the right. area. Um, in terms of... The sewage crisis we have in the territory, do you believe that this could be resolved much sooner than later? I don't think, I, mean, I don't want to say it could be resolved sooner or later because we had all opportunity to fix this years ago and we keep kicking the can down the road. I just feel as if what needs to happen, we just need to take the bull by the hand and just do what we have to do and get it fixed. Stop finding excuses and stop. You know, it's, 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 it's important that we say, hey, look, let's prioritize this. And that's something I want to push for this, this general election, if, if I'm elected. I want to say, look, let's make prioritize what we want to see done. If it's 10 things, we want to do five, let's choose five. But sewage has to be one of the main ones. So yes, I will push for that to be done as soon as possible as well. Mm. And another major issue that continues to affect uh, portions of the territory is the uh, incinerator issue or the pond landfill issue where open um, burning of garbage continues to affect members of the first district uh, and some members of the third district as well as some reports from areas in St. Thomas, etc. as well, uh, being affected by this. Uh, what would you do if re-elected to assist with getting this issue resolved? Well, there's a plan already there. Um, there's a plan already there to fix that. Um, actually stop the burning and everything and create an industrial site in the area. Um, so I think we will continue promoting that because there is something that will even change the road from where it is and stop burning. So there is a plan in progress. Mm -hmm. And you, do you believe that if a VIP uh, government is re-elected that this issue yes. as well as the sewage could, could be completely resolved? Yes, I definitely believe that because we already make moves, we already put things in plan. There, there are motions in plan to get all the six already. So yes, I do believe that. Okay. And we do know another major issue uh, in the territory is that of road infrastructure. Uh, what is your views on the current roads in the territory? The roads are bad. You can't run away from it. The roads is a problem. But I think, again, um, the problem we have with the roads is that we keep it coming and fixing the roads and not doing proper drainage. You need proper engineering to come in and make a full assessment. If there's one on the table already, need to be pulled off and fix, use it and get the roads fixed. Because you could turn around and patch a road tomorrow in the next 12 days, it gone bad again. So I think we definitely need to sit down, engineer the roads properly, and pave them properly, put in proper drainage, and go from there. So that's something that definitely to be doing. Um, I think government, we need to find the funding for that and prioritize it. Okay. And my next question, we do know that the territory is presently undergoing a constitutional review. Um, what are some of the additions you would like to see within the new constitution once it's finally completed? We'll be right back with more Just For The Record after this short break. One. Ugh. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health Is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> You're feeling it. Lonzo Boynes. 
Taekwondo. Adam Morals. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. Everything will <laughs> Get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. shark research so today we are doing whale research with beyond the reef and wherever I go I take CCT with me because my life is unlimited we now return with more just for the record um, what are some of the additions you would like to see within a new constitution once it's finally completed? But one of the things I would love to see is, um, again, when it comes to the civil service, servants and the government and the governor, we have to find a way where we can have a better relationship to get things done. Because I think the current stage as it is now is it, it, a problem because you, you're not getting all the work put out how you supposed to get it put out because there's too many you know, I can't do this because the governor who's in charge of me, I can't do this, you can't tell me what to do. And it, it's only stopping progress at the British Virgin Islands. The other thing I, I think that we really need to do is make sure the, the people of the Virgin Islands, the people of the BVA, get more, have more an, an autonomy, if that's the right word, where we could be responsible for ourselves. You know, given the right to do things for ourselves. Given, instead of trying to keep us down, let us get a chance, give us a chance to prove that we can manage our own affairs. We don't need interference, but we need to have a better relationship with the UK. That's how I put it, a better relationship, a true relationship, whereas we can sit down and, and make this country go come forward. Mm -hmm. And as you speak about more autonomy mm -hmm. as it relates to the constitution, I do know prior to the, um, uh, the, the review, uh, constitutional review, is, it was a situation where people have been saying maybe it's a situation where the governor should have less power, or the premier have less power. What is your views as it relates to the powers of both the premier and the governor, and your beliefs as it pertains to the next constitution uh, of the territory, and, and, and how you would like to see the powers of both in that <coughs> particular constitution? Well, maybe how, how I put this is, maybe we need to create some sort of council in between, because you don't want to have one individual have all the power. Right? And you need to actually sift things around. So I feel if you have a, a kind of like a, a split in the middle, because the governor definitely have to have too much power. Um, the premier, he have a lot of power as well. But I think that the power that is put in the premier hands, it should be governed by a council, basically. Whereas even when making a decision, the people involved may be more involved in this. You see, we have to get away from where this. We think that one person can make decisions for this country. Mm -hmm. And where is the people of the Virgin should be making the, the decision for the country. So I feel we should create some sort of council, whereas it will be an advisory to the Premier as well, even though he has his, his, his ministry. Mm. We have to have some sort of balance, because if we intend to get independent, we can't still leave it all in one person's hand, because it's the same thing we're going back again, saying that it's in the governor's hand. Mm. So I feel there should be some sort of committee or council form that will help with that as well. Mm. And since we are on the subject of constitutional review, we do know another major uh, topic or subject matter is whether a premier should be elected by the people or whether a party should have a say as it pertains to how the current system is. Do you believe, uh, the, in terms of this particular question, do you believe that a premier should be um, selected by a party as the, the customary um, norm or do you believe that a premier should be elected by the people? So for my preference, I would definitely believe it should be, a, it should be done by the people. Mm -hmm. my preference. I think it's very important that when you choose a leader, it's somebody that the people choose, not just a party. Um, there's a system now, but I feel it should be put in the way as let the people be the one to choose who you want to lead. Okay. 
And my next question too, as it relates to you being the, the, um, the former deputy speaker, I said former because the house has right. been dissolved. Um, should the speaker of the house uh, be elected or be an elected representative? Or do you believe it should remain uh, how it is right now where the government nominates a speaker to come into the House of Assembly? Well, actually right now, it can be an elected member. Um, it's a choice, so it, you have a choice. It can be an elected member that um, sits as a speaker. Um, and you can bring in a, a deputy speaker if you want. Um, should a deputy speaker be, I mean, should a speaker be elected? Um, I would say, I would say no. Um, mm -hmm. Why I say no, if, 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 because um, when you look at it, one thing I've learned now, um, being there as a deputy speaker, I think a deputy speaker is somebody who does have some sort of legal mind. That's how I put it. Mm -hmm. um, because we pass in laws, and if somebody should even know basically to some of the laws if we're making mistakes in there. I mean, being the speaker that we had, it made me realize that very much. So I wouldn't say it had to be somebody's elected. But I think we need to change the criteria of who should be the speaker, or who can be the speaker. And in terms of, you did say, uh, speaking about another House of Assembly role, that of the Attorney General, we do know in some of the other countries across the Caribbean, the Attorney General is elected. Um, do you believe that the current system should continue as it relates to um, nominating a, a, an Attorney General, or should an Attorney General be part of a political party where as you said, that particular person should have a legal mind. How do you think the approach should be as it relates to such? Again, it shouldn't be part. Of, it should be part. It should not be a part of the electoral. I don't think so. No, because um, to be voted on again, we have to be very careful when we choose and who to be AG. You might have four or five people apply for the job, um, and have to be a lawyer. But then now when you come to electing the AG, I guess you'll have to meet the criteria that the person must be a lawyer. Then. So we have to be careful how we're saying we want that to happen because, again, you have to build the criteria as how you want it to be. Um, I don't feel it should be an elected person as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of professionals out there, lawyers, who is, is much capable of doing this as well. And they might even want to be going through the process of an election. So you may end up losing two people who can really solve the time through political reasons. Mm -hmm. It's not like politics. Right now, you have some people who, who want to be in politics, who want to solve this country, but because of the, the system and how it is, they want to come run for council. Okay. Um, I just want to turn quickly to gun violence in the BVI. We do know over the last few years, um, it has been a growing concern. What is your position on gun, viol gun violence, and how would you seek to address this growing issue? One, first thing is that we need to do serious things for, for gun violence. We do not have... A, we do not have um, I tell people, gun don't kill people. It's people kill people, not a gun. People kill people. But I feel what should happen. We should have stiffer penalties, stiffer stuff when it comes to gun crimes. Um, I think that's a way to really deal with it, really make it really something stiff. Because if you don't do that, it can continue to happen. Because like, if you could turn on yourself for two years, three years, that, that doesn't stop nobody from saying, hey, look, I can do this, I can do that. I think we really need to get serious about gun violence and about crime. Mm -hmm. And um, my penultimate question um, on the subject matter of tourism, um, what is your view on the current state of the BVI as it relates to tourism and what more do you believe needs to be done to improve tourism in the BVI? Well, I always say don't reinvent the wheel. Um, we have a very good tourism product here now. We just need to sit down and really analyze and really turn around and say, where do we really want to go in tourism? Where do we want to see tourism in the BVI? Because we keep saying we want to see tourism. But when people come to visit us, is the way we, we greet them as well. You know, so we need to improve the, the way that we greet our people when they come to the country, especially immigration, you know, custom. Because you're for, that's the first people that you're meeting when you're reaching the VA. And if you get a bad experience there, you're going to end up deciding, hey, look, I ain't coming back in this country. So I think we need to really improve on our, the way we approach people that visit the Virgin Islands. That's one. And secondly, we need to promote our product more. Like, for instance, our historical sites. We have historical sites here that people would love to hear about. But when you go out, you see the historical site, you even don't know what it's about. So I think that we need to put like barcodes on all our historical sites with all the information that talks about what they are, how they are to, what it means to the BVI, so people could see it. I think that would improve, again, a lot of our historical areas 
and tourism product as well. And also, the blue and green economy, again, there's another tourism product for us where we could take people to a, where we fish, sport fishing, we could take them to a half. We have some of the, the best building grounds here for fishes in the, in the BVI, corals, crystal sea. We need to sell what we have. We need to really promote what we have. Don't just talk about it. Let's put the money into tourism. Because once you put the money into it, you'll get it back out. Okay. And finally, where do you see the BVI in the next 10 to 20 years? The next 10 to 20 years, I see us striving. I see us changing the, the way going forward because I think we have, we have learned through Hurricane Irma and we have learned through COVID-19 and we have learned through the COI what we need to do to get forward. And I think we, we need to stop fighting against each other and start working with each other moving forward. And if that happened, I could see the BVA being a, a place where everybody wanted to come. Because we have so much respect and love for each other in this country, but we, 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 we're losing it when we start talking about each other, bringing us together. Because we are, we are in the media selling our dirty laundry, not selling what we're really about. And I feel if we move in that direction, I could see the BVA striving back into tourism, we can see us striving back into where people who want to come to the BVI. Mm. Well, I want to thank you, Honorable Smith, uh, for answering all the questions mm -hmm. I delivered to you today mm -hmm. and for joining us here on Just for the Record. I thank you very much as well. Okay, viewers. Well, that's all we have for today's Just for the Record. Until next time, I am Kamal Haynes. Hope you enjoy the content. Bye-bye. One. Uh. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turbo. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down back. Steve Augustine. You did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps. And as you can see, it's actually. <laughs> You're feeling it. My Lonzo Boys. Taekwondo. Adam Morrows. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. We... <laughs> <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies, and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy.